Hey Grant, I'm developing a cloud function and I'm having issues troubleshooting it. Oh, uh, have you tried debugging your function locally? Oh no, I haven't. Let's pair a program together. So Martin, what's the issue? Don't you write perfect code that works the first time you run it? <laughs> I wish. Uh, let me give you some background. I'm building a cloud function to share all the cute animal photos you sent me. Testing the function is getting fairly complicated, and I keep getting an error, trying to fix it, deploy, wait a minute, test again. It's taking a lot of time. Mm, yeah, that does sound time consuming and risky, especially if you're testing in production. So let's go and uh, I'll check out your code and your function locally on my machine. Sounds great. So here I've checked out your code. I mean, you're a pretty good coder, but no, sorry, focus, focus, Grant. Um, let me go and show you how you can go and run your function locally. So in this case, we got a node function. To run our function locally, I'll first install the Google Cloud Functions Framework with NPM I Google Cloud Functions Framework. All right, I'm a pretty good coder, huh? All right, <laughs> but so this is Node, but what about languages other than Node? Uh, my coworker, for example, uses Java. Oh, uh, great question, Martin. So this library, the Functions Framework, is available in all Cloud Function runtimes. So the process is pretty similar between Python, Go, Java, Ruby, PHP, and .NET. Um, in fact, there's a link in the description of this video down below with documentation with detailed instructions for those languages. So next, we can go and just use the functions framework uh, for that language as a library so you can run your function locally. Let's add a start script so we can simply run npm start. This will start our localhost server serving our function. Neat. Uh, so we can just curl this localhost URL and test the function locally. Mm. Uh huh. Oh, oh! It looks like we're getting the same error. Darn. Uh, no, Martin, Martin. So this is the error we want to see. It's actually the same error that we're seeing in production. But now we can go and test locally. Oh, I see. Uh, all right. So how do we debug this locally? Well, I mean, you can go use console.log statements, which I sometimes do. Don't, don't tell my manager. But uh, this can be a little bit cumbersome, especially with a larger application. Um, so let's go ahead and set up the node debugger. That sounds good. Are you saying that I can use the normal node debugger? Yes. So node comes with a debugger out of the box. We can simply attach this debugger to our node process running our function. So in VS Code, let's use the attach command. Oh, nice. OK, all right. So oh, I see the status bar change from blue to orange. Yes, so that indicates that we've successfully attached our debugger. Now let's go ahead and add a breakpoint in the beginning of our function. Do, do, do. Uh -huh. Good, good, all right. And now let's run our function, see if we can catch this pesky error. All right, I'll go and curl our localhost URL. OK, I see the editor has paused the execution on the breakpoint. Yep. Uh, in fact, if we go and hover over some variables, we can see uh, the current values. So let's go. Oh, I see. Oh, look at that. Oh, it looks like I used rec.params, where it should be rec.query. Uh, would you fix that, Grant? Oh, yeah, sure. Oh, that's a silly typo. And yeah. yeah, it looks like there's a couple of few more errors here. I'll go ahead and edit them. And <laughs> it's done. So now that we've edited our code, we need to go ahead and restart the function for it to take effect. Uh, one second, let me go just cancel the process, restart it, and try again. And boom. This is great. But Grant, the function accesses the Firestore database in the cloud. 
How come that worked when you ran the function on your local machine? Oh, a uh, great question, Martin. So the client library used in the function picks up the local credentials from gcloud. In fact, I ran a special command to get these credentials. These are called application default credentials. These default credentials are the exact same credentials that you see with Cloud Functions that's used in production. So to get this, I ran the command gcloud auth application dash default login before I uh, set this. So remember that Firestore isn't running on our local machine. It's the function is using the client library and our auth to call the Firestore database on our cloud project. Oh, I see. Uh, so Grant, how about we close the loop and deploy the code to Google Cloud Functions? Sounds great. Let me go ahead and run the deploy script here. See Cloud Functions deploy. All right, it looks like it deployed. And now let's curl the function. Great. I'm curling the function, our URL. And it looks like it works. Uh, it looks like we don't see the error of an undefined variable anymore. I'll go ahead and click the photo link and see if it actually worked. Ah, look at that cute puppy, Martin. <laughs> yes, so furry. I'm happy the function works. Well, it sounds like we definitely deserve a coffee break. Yes, we've earned it. <laughs> Great. Thank you, everyone, for watching. If you have any questions for me or Grant, please add them in the comments below. Also, please let us know if you have another serverless topic that you'd like to see us cover in a video. Bye for now.